I'd like to welcome everyone to the January 6th town meeting. Please stand for the pledge. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. If you have cell phones with you this evening, can you please put them on airplane mode or turn them off or vibrate? Put them on vibrate, please, so they don't interrupt the meeting. Okay, future meetings. Citizens Advisory Committee meeting will be Tuesday, January 21st, 2020, 7.30 p.m. Town Office Quarterly Planning Commission meeting will be Monday, January 27th at 7.30 p.m. The next town council meeting will be Monday, February 3rd at 7.30 p.m. Is there any other meetings that we had missed that's not on the paper here? Uh, yeah, you didn't miss it. It's my fault. Parks and Rec will meet on the 30th at 7 p.m. Okay, Parks and Rec was at 7, 7.30 or 7? 7. 7. 7 o'clock here at the town office. What was the date? I'm sorry. The June, the, I mean, it's not January the 30th. um yes we're going um, we're going to push a couple things forward here tonight first um we have the catoctin uh, championship football team here from catoctin and we're going to give them a proclamation this or I'll read it. Okay. All right. We would like to welcome the uh, Catoctin State Championship team. That's good to have the principal, Ms. Clements, here gradually with us and the head coach, Matt Williams. And uh, I'd like to read this to you. Proclamation honoring the 2019 Class 1A State Football Champions, Catoctin High School. Whereas in 2019, the Catoctin High School Cougars fielded a true team in every sense of the word with 44 skilled United football players and 15 outstanding coaches. Whereas the Cougars football team can beat the regular season with 13 wins and one loss. And whereas the Catoctin Cougars won a hard fought 31 to eight victory over Dunbar Poets, December 7th, 2019 at the Navy Marine Corps Memorial Stadium. And whereas the hard work and dedication, sportsmanship, and talents and exceptional team chemistry of the Catoctin High School varsity football team has en enabled these student athletes to earn the 2019 Class 1A state championship title. And whereas head coach Doug Williams, assistant coach Paul Dumars, and the entire coaching staff, team members, parents, faculty, student body at Catoctin High School were integral in guiding the team to the victory through their unwavering support. I'm almost there. And whereas the mayor, board, the commissioners, and citizens of the town of Emmitsburg are pleased to, to publicly commend and recognize the state champions. Now, therefore, be it proclaimed that the mayor and board, the commissioners of the town of Emmitsburg, Maryland, do hereby recognize and congratulate the 2019 Catoctin High School varsity football team for winning the 2019 1A state championship adopted the sixth day of January 2020. Congratulations. <laughs> uh, 
uh, this is quite an honor to be up here, stand in front of you guys. With these guys behind us, I'm going to speak for, for the coaches and the players. Let me tell you, when we rode into Emmonsburg that night after state championship and all those people were standing on the corner cheering and clapping and now we drove all the way up 15 uh, with the fire trucks coming, I, you know, we had the greatest crowd and all four games down to the state championship. There was four state championships. We had the biggest crowd. You people were part of that crowd. The, we won this championship. We won this together as a whole community. This was a community championship. All the former players, all the former students and teachers that ever went to school, taught in high school uh, from all over, you were part of that. And I'm telling you, it was an example of the parade and the support we get everywhere we go. I got people walking up to me i never seen before in my life congratulating us, and it's because of the community. And I, I, got a, um, I have a man who won a state championship in New York City. He said after the game, they went home. They didn't have anybody cheering them. They had no one welcoming them. They just went home and went home that day. He said it only happens in a small town like Emmonsburg and Thurmont. So thank you very much. Anybody else? Any captains want to say something? I'm all right. All right, you okay? All right, we, we do have a little gift we're going to give you outside here just to commemorate your, your championship. And again, on behalf of the whole town, we're so excited about having a, a championship and what it's done for the character of, of the students there and the, the support. It's a wonderful, terrific school. You guys will look back and say this is, this is an absolutely wonderful experience to uh, go to Catoctin High. And again, congratulations. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. All I can do right now is clap. Thank you. 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 By the way, to the mayor gets back in? No. Rock and roll. Such a new rhythm. What is it? All righty. We're going to go ahead and continue with the meeting. Uh, approval of meeting minutes for December 3rd, 2019. Oh, I'm wrong. Scratch that. We'll put it on hold for just a minute. Mr. Wilson, can you get, um, would you like to get up and speak for us now, please? I forgot all about you. Uh, good evening, uh, Mayor and uh, Commissioners. Uh, so good, and also to the town of Emmitsburg. Uh, it was so good to see the uh, young men um, up here. You know, we're all Cougars tonight, and, you know, we congratulate these young men on their fine uh, achievement. Um, my name is Roger Wilson. I'm the Director of Government Affairs for Frederick County, uh, and I am uh, before you on behalf of the County Executive. I wanted to come up and uh, introduce you to my replacement, I am moving on uh, in another capacity, uh, but I wanted to introduce my replacement, Joy Schaefer, who's joining us. And she will be the new government affairs um, uh, for Frederick County government. And if you have any issues or concerns, please reach out to her. Uh, she'll be covering Annapolis and also the 12 municipalities. And uh, she's coming from the Board of Ed, so she has some uh, perspective from there. And so, um, Joy? Uh, well, first, thank you for, for allowing us this time on your agenda. And I am very excited to be um, serving in this way. Um, my door is always open. My phone's always available to you. I came on a, a, the perfect night for a former Board of Education member um, to see our, our young men on that football team. Um, they worked really, really hard. We're so proud of them. Um, I know that you are all having an issue with uh, your, your water today, and we're happy to take that back to the county executive and to staff, see what we can do about that. So um, if you want to give us more information on that, we're, we're happy to communicate all of that to um, the staff back uh, down in Frederick City. Okay. Yeah. Thank you. 
Uh, see, day, see, day one already. She's <laughs> solving problems. So uh, Mike Marshner, who's um, already uh, assigned to this uh, issue, he'll be reaching out to the town individually, okay? Great. Thank you so All much. Right. Okay. All right. We appreciate so, any help we can get. Absolutely. Uh, so good to see you all. And again, uh, please reach out to Joy. Uh, she'll share her contact information tonight. <coughs> and uh, it was great working with you all. All right. See you around town. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks, all right. You want to do the Christmas? Do you want to do the Christmas? Is the mayor going to do that? Which one? He wanted to do the Christmas decorations so those people don't have to wait. The winners of the Christmas oh, decorations. Oh, okay. Yeah, the mayor should do that. Um, if you want to do the police report while you're waiting for We him. can. Okay. Police report. Deputy White House. Oh, that's right. And the minutes also. Okay. Good evening, Deputy White House. I'm with the Sheriff's Office. Um, this is the police report for 2019, December. Uh, you could, these are going to be the totals for the year. Um, let's see here. We'll start off. The, the biggest thing we had was the 911 calls. There was a lot of those throughout the years, almost 200 of those. A lot of those came from the, uh, the Basilica across the street, the um, seniors or the senior housing over there. Um, for the proactive stats we had like 222 walking patrols on uh, the traffic stats we had um, almost 1500 traffic stops uh, 630 citations uh, about 1700 warnings for myself and deputy a halt you can see the arrests and violations there's the totals down there for for the year as well um, the special assignments at the bottom the christmas tree lighting ceremony uh, i attended that on the second um, the additional information on the back, uh, I'd like to thank uh, Ms. Ray for getting out um, the information on package theft prevention on the website, um, just to get that out with people. Um, myself and Deputy A. Halt spent a considerable amount of time in the developments during the Christmas uh, season and afterwards for trying to prevent the, um, try to deter package thefts from happening. Um, the A. Halt family actually bought several gifts, which him and I passed out on the, on the 23rd. Um, his family purchased those with their money and had everything labeled like boys, girls, ages, and we just drove around trying to giving out gifts to, to kids. Um, also, Deputy Ahold on Christmas Day when he, he came up in the evening and worked out, or wor worked out, he, he worked, um, he found an injured goose down by um, Brookfield Development area. Um, he actually took the goose home to his house that night and then... He took it to the Second Chance Wildlife Center in Rockville. So, good job on that. <laughs> uh, there was one uh, natural death in town in, for December, and there was also an overdose, but the patient was not real cooperative in giving us any kind of information. So, not sure what that was, but suspect opiates. So, I didn't put the totals down there for the year for overdose. I think it was probably around three reported. So maybe four, but I can get, if you want definite numbers on that, I can uh, get that to you. But that's everything. Is there any questions for me? Any questions for Deputy Whitehouse? I have none. None? Thank you. All right. Thanks. Thank you. <coughs> Christmas decoration. We were waiting on you. <coughs> All righty. We'll do the Christmas decorations now. Okay. The winners for the Christmas decorations. Okay. All right, uh, if I may, uh, we, have, we have some people here for the Christmas decorations, and I thank all our judges that were, were out there. Uh, first place, um, most traditional, was Joseph and Vicki Simmel of 1315 Hunting Circle, and uh, I believe they're here tonight, are they not? Uh, all right, could you, could you come forward? I'd like to... Thank you. Thank you.
Thank you. Thank, Thank you. Much. Congratulations. Thanks for decorating. We only have another, one other winner here now. Uh, in second place for best fit, best business, and that's uh, my father's footstep. And I see John the back here. Thank you. Thank you very much. I really appreciate that. Thank you very much. Great to have you. Thank you very much. Uh, we had first place uh, the Simmels, most traditional. Second place with Sahog family at uh, 10 12 Flat Run <coughs> Court. Honorable mention was Tracy Lewis at 119 to Ball Street. Most decorative, bright, flashing, sparkle. First place was Ronald Rogers at 1303 Huntley Court, Circle, excuse me. And second place, Lori Riffsnyder at 13 Sanella uh, Drive. And honorable mention, Ed Wants, 217 East Main Street. Uh, best business, we had the carriage house and then uh, we had our winner here that was here, my father's footsteps, and honor, honorable mention was Stavros. But I really want to thank everybody, thank the judges, and, and thank everybody for coming. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. Thank you. We already did him. Mr. Wilson? We yeah. already did him. Huh? He's finished. Oh, you already have? <laughs> what happened? You're around. Okay. In okay. Good. Very good. <laughs> Yeah. Welcome, welcome aboard. Thank you. All righty, uh, approval of the meeting minutes for December 3rd, 2019. Has everybody read the minutes? Do you have any corrections? No, sir. No, sir. I need... I'll, I'll make a motion to accept the minutes as presented. I'll second the motion. Motion to make by Commissioner O'Donnell, second by Commissioner Burns. Any other question or any discussion before we vote? These are just for December 3rd, correct? Correct. Okay. Right. Sorry. All in favor, please say aye. 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 Any nays? <laughs> Motion carries. Five to zero. All righty. Town manager's report. You have minutes from December 16th. Oh, I'm sorry. Also. December 16th meeting minutes? Yes. Page six. This is from the special meeting we have. Correct. Your workshop. Our workshop. Mm hmm I need a motion, or is there any corrections or anybody wants to do before the meeting for December 16th, Mr. Ritz? I had none, no. I, no. Okay. I'll make a motion to accept the meeting minutes from December 16th, 2019 as presented. Motion has been made by Commissioner O'Donnell. Mm -hmm. I second. Second by Commissioner <clears throat> Davis. Any other discussion? Yes, sir. All in favor, please say aye. 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 Any nays? <laughs> motion carries five to zero. Now I'll town manager's report. We'll get there. That's okay. Uh, this will be the town manager's report for November of 2019. I'll highlight some of the key areas uh, related to streets, outside of the monthly street sweeping and storm drain inlet cleaning. Uh, staff up, put up uh, Christmas decorations around town in front of the community center. Um, prior to that, they put up the flags around the square for Veterans Day, and they installed new solar lights on the flagpole by the uh, Doughboy statue. Related to parks, um, outside their monthly maintenance, they winterized the restroom buildings and the concession stand in Memorial Park. They winterized the dog park and they replaced the board, um, some boards along the community park walking trail bridge. Related to water, uh, Rainbow Lake is now back at its spillway, spillway level of 16.6 .6 feet. The roughing filters are backwashed three times a day and DEs are being done once a week. The well usage is being reduced as lake production has slowly increased and well number four and five have been turned off as of uh, November 27th. 
uh, water production and consumption, we produced an average of 262,811 gallons per day and consumed an average of 216,770 gallons per day. Uh, the equi the um, difference is the backwash water at about 21.6 percent. We purchased 419,300 gallons from uh, Mount St. Mary's in the month of November. Related to wastewater, we received only 1.5 inches of precipitation. The average is 3.8. We currently only have a surplus of 0.2 inches of rain over the or precipitation over the last six months. Uh, at the wastewater treatment plant, we treated 541,000 gallons per day and consumed 216,770 gallons per day, which means 59.9% uh, of the wastewater treated was wild water. We had no spills of untreated sewage in the month of November. However, we did exceed the plant's design capacity one time in the month of November, and that was November 1st for um, 1,153,000 gallons per day, and that was because of the heavy rains we received on October 31st. Um, the muffin monster at the pump station clogged several times in November. Um, we're continuing to see um, a large amount of what they call disposable rags, but they are not disposable rags, and they should never be flushed down the toilet. They are clogging up the pump station. Um, other than that, the wastewater treatment plant ran smoothly. Trash pickup will remain Mondays in the month of January. Uh, highlighted are um, some of the meetings I attended in the month of November. Some noteworthy items. Um, the lagoon, uh, lagoon liner number three had to be repaired at the wastewater treatment plant. Um, staff assisted with a turkey trot. The LG Sonic was pulled from the lake for the season. We finished the well installation and now the eight inch line coming down the mountain has been shut off completely. The backwash permit renewal at the wastewater treatment plant was completed. And um, finally, Maddie received the uh, word from the state, our record retention policy has been fully approved. We will not be bringing it back again. Mm -hmm. um, finally, in the month of November, uh, staff addressed brown water and low pressure complaints. And the highlighted items are just what was performed in November. Um, we perform, perform lead and copper testing, we perform bacteria testing, chlorine, turbidity, and pH testing. We flushed hydrants near problem areas. We responded to several uh, resident complaints and reviewed plans for future hydrant flushing as well as installation of the blow-off valve. I'll defer um, further comment on this to commissioner comments. I believe they're going to be addressed further. And that's the town manager's report for November. Does anyone have any questions for the town manager at this time? Yes, sir. Quick Mr. follow up. On, sorry. Quick follow up on the the rags that are getting into the grinder at the wastewater uh, on on route to the wastewater treatment plant. Um, in an earlier meeting, we asked about talking to the retailers to not sell them. Did that occur? I believe we sent an email and never got a response. Okay. So um, is it possible we could phone call conversation? Okay. Is it possible we can do that again with both our guys and perhaps even Weiss down the road, just to see maybe if. Um, They'd be willing to accommodate. Right. Great. Thank you. That's it, Mr. President. Thank you, Commissioner Ritz. Have any questions? Not at this time. No. Commissioner Davis. No. Commissioner Burns. No. I have none. Also, thank you. Um, next on the agenda. I get quick. Please. What? Do I get to say anything? I'm, I didn't get to you yet. <laughs> no, okay. Good. <laughs> Town planner's report. Hello, everybody. This is the town planner's report for November. I'm also going to highlight key areas of the month. Um, under Board of Commissioners, I researched and prepared documents on the following topics for our uh, workshop meeting on the 18th, the new business incentive samples, the hotel occupancy <coughs> pillow tax, Emmett Gardens water uh, plant project, Frederick County municipal tap and impact fee comparison chart, town tap fee history chart, and current available tap chart. Uh, researched and prepared information um, for the 16th Board of Commissioners meeting, the sample ordinance and resolutions regarding water and sewer connection fees, and also the small business tax credit. I prepared ordinances 19-07, 08, and 10. Under grants, I worked with property owners on the new round of community, le community legacy grant applications. Uh, we still have about 
unallocated right now, about 25000 That's wasn't applied for. So please keep applying for the Community Legacy Grants. Um, submitted the Chesapeake Bay Trust Storm Drain Program Grant Final Report. Started working on the Community Development Block Grant application and prepared three resolutions for that, which you'll see at a later date. Um, for Municipal uh, Separate Storm Sewer System, MS4, I created a reforestation deed of easement, maintenance covenants, and agreements for the tree planting projects in the future. Met with Mr. Breton of the Daughters of Charity regarding tree planting project. I also met with a nonprofit group called Streamlink Education regarding the tree planting project. Under Planning Commission, uh, I prepared the staff reports for the Rudder Store 84 Improvement Plan for the 25th meeting. I uh, worked with the town attorney on the Rudder's Pump Station Public Works Agreement. I attended the meeting on the 25th, uh, re reviewed and approved the corrected final Duncan site plan. The, pl the Planning Commission did that and prepared materials for the, that month's, or for, excuse me, for December 17th Planning Commission for the Rudder's Improvement Plan and the two amendments that you'll see tonight. Under miscellaneous, I completed a GIS course with Penn State World Campus, which was done um, an, for an actor, active, after work activity, excuse me. I attended the green team meeting, and I also attended the EBPA breakfast on the 21st, and I was the keynote speaker for that. And that's everything. Thank you. Uh, any questions for the town planner at this time? Mr. O'Donnell? Yes, sir. Mr. Thank Ritz? You. No, I do. Commissioner Burns? Nope. Commissioner Davis? Nope. I have none at this time. Thank you, Zach. Commissioner Comments? Commissioner O'Donnell? Yes, sir. Thank you. Um, a couple quick items and maybe one less quick item. Um, I was contacted by the um, Maryland Endurance Challenge folks. They are associated with SHIP. That's the Student Homelessness Program in Frederick County. Ed Hind has spoken to this board before. Uh, we're trying to better align town businesses with the needs of the event. Um, some preliminary discussions have occurred. We've heard back from their board, and they've made some specific requests related to businesses and also having deputies assigned there uh, during part of the day. Uh, and there, to clarify, is at Mount St. Mary's uh, at Old, um, Old Frederick Road. Um, the Moore organization, one of our sponsors for the Trails on the Mountain for our 16 miles up there, uh, they're having a meeting this year, uh, a, a winter party as it were. Um, I'm usually the one who attends. I enjoy attending. I invite any other commissioner who'd like to go to consider attending, so I'll extend that invitation. Uh, I was contacted by an individual related to community-supported agriculture for a program in the upcoming year. Um, I'll hopefully be able to follow up with the mayor's permission with staff on this. Yeah. Uh, to chase this down, I think this would be a worthwhile endeavor for uh, expanding that program. I know one already exists in town, I believe. Um, I received information from uh, the planner regarding bond language for trail repairs. Uh, there are a total of, I'd say, about a half mile of trails that were uh, severely damaged by the logging work up on the mountain. And what I asked for from the planner was the language that would trigger access to the bond money. And what I'm hoping for is clarification at a later time, again, with the mayor's permission to talk to staff because the language is somewhat ambiguous. And I'm concerned tonight when we look at that forestry piece that we have, uh, if we don't have more specific language, uh, it might lead to underfunding repairs. And just, you know, I'd, I'd like to see that not occur. Um, welcome, Mr. Wilson. Welcome, Ms. Schaefer. Thank you for coming up from the... Uh, uh, from Frederick City to uh, represent the government. We appreciate that from the county level. Um, for the town uh, planner and the town manager, um, I've had a request. I'm always the road stripe guy. I don't know why, but uh, I've had requests to get stripes improved by the bridge for lane delineation. Um, they've worn already, and people are complaining to me about it, so I will share that with you. Um, and I don't know when we are going to talk about it. I hope we do. Um, I'm curious of those who are here tonight, how many folks are here related to their concerns with the brown water or uh, those items? Great. Okay. Thank you. Okay. So moving forward from there, um, I'll ask Mr. President, uh, do we have a format for this when public comment comes forward? No. 
Yes, we do. We do? Um, I we didn't have, have one, um, but <laughs> okay, all right, all right. We have something prepared that I believe Commissioner Burns is going to um, present during commissioner comments. Terrific. And okay. then they'll be invited to speak during public comment as, um, as normal. Okay, I'll, I'll share a couple things. And again, my, um, I appreciate everybody coming in. I know time is sort of, uh, well, it's absolutely precious. So coming in is, is a difficult thing. Um, I will offer this. As hard as it is to hear, we are doing our level best to do this correctly and to hear from you. And I hope it's at least recognized that the board, many members, virtually all the members have gone out to homes. We brought water to homes to try to get this right. We've interacted with staff excessively to the point where I'm sure they're tired of hearing from us. Um, but beyond that, the number one complaint I hear relating this to staff is brown water. Uh, the next piece is the quality of communication that comes forward from both the board, the mayor, and staff. It's not just the staff alone. So my hope is that tonight we can hammer out the starting point for a better process for communication. I know we've had this conversation before, um, but I think that's one of our frameworks. Uh, the other part, and I'll go to part three, is the level of some households, and, and sharing this, I know this is reiterating it, but the level of frustration in some households is, A, completely understandable. Um, uh, we've heard it six to eight times, I believe. I think everybody's keenly aware of that. Um, and I want to share with everybody, again, it is our full intent to get this corrected expediently. Uh, we, we, we're not dragging our feet on this, though it might seem that way, but your input is invaluable, and again, I'm sorry we had to spend the time doing this, but uh, it's, it's, you know, borrowing a word from what we heard earlier, it's teamwork, it's community, and this is how we get this done. So um, I'll end my comments at that, and again, thank you all for coming in. Thank you, Mr. President. Thank you. Commissioner Ritz? Um, yes, it's, it's unfortunate that a majority of those in attendance are here for the brown water issue this evening. However, it is fortunate that you are here. Um, there's a rumor circulating around town that public comment at a town meeting is only um, available or open for an agenda item, and that is that that's that's not true. Um, there is no agenda item this evening for brown water, so I'm glad that you came in. Anyone is able to come into any town meeting. Um, it's public comment for a reason. Public comment. You're you got your time to speak whatever you'd like to speak about. So, thank you for coming in. May I address one of Commissioner O'Donnell's requests? They are striping tomorrow. They'll be doing bridge work all this week on the sidewalk and striping. I hope that's on TV. Striping begins tomorrow. Great. Thank you. Okay, good. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, Mr. I'm, Davis. I'm finished. And it's also supposed to snow tomorrow, so. <laughs> I know. Hey, hey. You're raining on my parade. But anyway. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I'm going to stay positive. Uh, <laughs> I, I do have the same concerns about the water and, and, and you know, please come to us when you have that. Don't take it out on staff. Don't take it out on our workers. They're, they're trying everything. But uh, uh, it was great tonight to be able to uh, sit downstairs with uh, those 20-some uh, uh, young men uh, and their coaches that worked so hard to, to, to make us proud as a town. Sometimes we forget we do have a high school, and they are part of Emmitsburg. And... Uh, uh, they were just tickled to death to be here. And, and as a matter of fact, some of them said, this has never happened before we heard. We said, well, no, it hasn't. But we, uh, we hope to see you back here next year. So I put some pressure on them. But it was really good that uh, Commissioner Burns uh, could talk to him for 15 or 20 minutes about athlete, athletics and, you know, what to look for after you graduate from high school and college because he had that experience to, to be an alternate to the Olympic team. And he, he had their attention and they were – they were really focused with what he shared with that. So uh, next to the hot dogs, that was probably the second best thing that, <laughs> that happened. But uh, we got a lot on the agenda, and I'll move on. Thank you, Commissioner Davis. Commissioner Burns? Thank you. Uh, on behalf of the mayor, the board of commissioners, town manager, and town staff, I would like to provide an update on the ongoing brown water complaints. Uh, this is a timeline that we've started back in October. Uh, discovered potential leak on Waynesboro Pike and North Seton Avenue. At that time, they could not locate the exact location. Uh, the pro provincial house was given permission to flush their hydrants on October 15th of 2019. Town staff began biannual hydrant flushing throughout the town on October 28th and continued through November 5th. Flushed 4, uh, 421,000 gallons through the lines. 
The town experienced a deficit in rain over the summer months, June through September. This prohibited staff from ex executing a complete hydrant flush. Initial brown water complaints began early October and continued with most complaints starting in and around October 24th of 2019. Staff discovered WF DeLauder pulling water from their hydrants. They had been given permission to utilize the hydrants. This permission has now been rescinded. Brown water complaints continue to be posted on Facebook. Residents encouraged to file their complaints with the town directly. Town staff responded to numerous residents and collected samples. Testing was completed by staff as well as Catoctin Labs for chlorine, pH, turbidity, bacteria, lead, and copper. MDE was apprised of the results and ongoing efforts. All testing came back within the limits required by MDE and the EPA. Mayor and commissioners also reached out to many residents that were experiencing problems. We also held a water distribution event one night behind the town office. Staff, with mayor and board permission, began soliciting bids for a new clarifier, which will help maintain capacity of the water plant storage tank. This will allow for more effective flushing. Town staff and contractor installed a blow-off on the water line coming off the mountain in an effort to better the sediment from the lines prior to reaching the town on December 19th. Town staff is also developing a new approach for flushing the hydrants, the order, the amount of water used, etc. Due to ongoing complaints, hydrants were reflushed in the areas that continued to experience brown water, Brookfield, West Main Street, Southgate, on December 16th through the 20th. After this flushing, no complaints were received for approximately two weeks. The leak de detection specialist was brought in and pinpointed a water leak on Waynesboro Pike on December 17th. On January 2nd, town staff began receiving a few more brown water complaints. St staff continued to receive complaints over the next several days. Also on January 2nd, staff was contacted by the provincial house who advised they were making repairs to a valve on their water line. Staff received notice as the work was beginning. Unfortunately, staff did not, did not realize that this work would cause any additional problems with the short notice. No notification was given to the residents. In hindsight, that was an error on our part. Initial water line work to begin on Waynesboro Pike. Notification has already been posted regarding Waynesboro Pike, which will begin tomorrow, January 7th. Water liner repair on North Seton Avenue will be completed this week as well. We are encouraging everyone to, step, to uh, be informed by the staff. Please sign up for Alert Frederick. There's a link on our website, Facebook, and the Water Bill newsletter. The town has also been informed by FEMA that they performed significant water line work several months ago and again performed work three weeks ago. Town staff was not notified and do not know what work was done. The town is unaware of work being done at FEMA and do not know what effects this has had on or will continue to have on our water system. The mayor is working on better communication with the provincial house and FEMA. Both agencies are performing required testing of their systems and are authorized to complete the work. However, we would like a better system in place for notification. We are currently investigating possible development issues in areas where the problems persist, such as Southgate and Brookfield. The mayor has also reached out to the county executive office for assistance. So I'm beginning my fourth month here as town commissioner. I never thought in my 39 years of living that I would know as much about brown water, <laughs> sewers, pipes, water treatment plants, the direction water flows, uh, blow off valves, everything under the sun. I've learned more in the last four months than I thought I ever would. And I'm continuing to learn every single day. I'm on the phone with town staff. I'm on the phone with developers from different communities. I'm on the phone with uh, state delegates, anybody I can think of that can help me try to provide as much information to solve this issue as possible. Um, something that's come across in the last few days that we're in the process of working on with the county, that we'll be talking with them, and we'll be talking with the developers who have developed many of the properties in this town, um, is some of the branches of the mains that are going off the main water line. We obviously know through all of our testing with the EPA, the MDE, that the water leaving the wastewater treatment plant is clean. They've done every test on the sun, whether it be turbidity, everything, chlorine, pH, everything of that nature. The question is, why is the water continuing to be brown? Where is the sediment getting captured? Where is it getting caught up in the pipes? And why is it continuously hitting the same areas over and over again? We now feel that we have some ideas, speaking with town staff, uh, the, the workers over the water treatment plant, that we have some ideas that with the help of the county, pulling permits, pulling records from uh, 
the work that was done initially when all these houses were put in, that we might be able to hopefully discover why the sediment is still settling in these pipes and why possible new development that was in town caused some of these issues. I've also learned that Emmitsburg has one of the lowest per gallon rates of water in the state. Uh, I know, for example, 1,000 gallons, which is the equivalent of 104 times filling a large bathtub, only costs $2.40. If you go to Thurmont, it's going to cost you $3.72. You go farther south into Rockville, and you're looking at $10.50 for that same amount. So we do are blessed here in Emmitsburg in the fact that we have been able to keep our water levels so low. But unfortunately, if we were to raise those to, in order to r find more money for any future issues with pipes or anything of that nature, we would see an increase in our water, ta uh, water taxes and our water bills. Um, also spoke with town staff that the water lines that are on Main Street that everybody's concerned about were actually installed in the late 80s. Mm -hmm. Those water lines are actually supposed to last over 100 years and we're only roughly at 30 years at this point in time. So I understand that water is an issue at this point. I jinxed myself at one point in time by joking with friends that I've never had brown water. And then I turned my bathtub on and had to sit there for an hour and a half. I understand the frustration of having to do this. I understand the frustration of having to worry about, can I turn my washer on? Can I turn my dishwasher on? Are my clothes going to come out? But what I do know is that our town staff is working diligently. And I know the, guy, the, the gentlemen at the wastewater treatment plant have aged tremendously in the last three months trying to figure this out. And their work may not be recognized, but those guys are working tirelessly to try to solve this issue. And I appreciate that everybody came out tonight and will voice their opinions in person. And like the other commissioner said, we are always available for discussions. Uh, four commissioners and I sat out back one night handing out water, answering questions for anybody that had them. Uh, I know Commissioner Davis has been to people's homes. I know everybody else has been on the phones, answering emails, anything like that. Please feel free to come to us. We do have information. We can help you as much as possible. And hopefully, we can all together figure out what this problem is. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Burns. Um, I don't have any questions this time um, because I want to try to get the meeting moved forward. We got a long agenda. Uh, Mr. Mayor. Okay, yeah. Thank you very much um, to everybody out here who's uh, had brown water, and I, I've had some traces of it too. Uh, uh, our responsibility is to kind of make sure that the trains run on time. Yeah, that's the old expression. And uh, if you know, snow removal, trash removal, some of the basic stuff, potholes and everything like that. But one of them is to provide potable water to all the households. We know we know we're at our creation point where it's clean. So, we, but we do have old lines in in, in this town and. Uh, uh, I, I know one jurisdiction where they found they had they wooden pipes. They, they uncovered them. But uh, we're going to do everything we possibly can, and we, and we are ready at this time. Our, our, it's the number one priority with our staff right now is to take care of that. Uh, if I may, just a couple of quick things over the over the over the month. Uh, I attended St. Joe's uh, Troop uh, Scout Troop 727. They're Eagle Scouts. Uh, Matthias Buckheiser, Joseph Lagari. And Thomas Lowe all won their Eagle Scouts, and uh, it was a wonderful evening at, at St. Joe's and a terrific program, a big group of people there, and it's a wonderful place to start children along with our Boys and Girls Club we have in town. If you have any questions on the Boys and Girls Club, please call us. It's a terrific activity, uh, year-round activity. Uh, I'd like to thank um, Commissioner Davis and his bride for uh, uh, providing the food service downtown, uh, downstairs for the football team, and also to Vigilant Hose for laying us bar their sign up here on, on Cougar Country. Uh, they're always there. I did go to the uh, 36, uh, 136th annual uh, Vigilant Hose. Uh, Frank would probably say I was there at the 36th one, but it, no, but the 136th annual Vigilant Hose banquet and uh, uh, terrific event. Uh, a very large crowd. A lot of uh, people do a great deal of volunteering in our community. Congratulations to Commissioner Davis with awards. He walked away with a couple of awards that night and uh, 
and it, it, he plays a special place there. Uh, I'd like to um, talk a little bit about, if I may, um, I know Dr. Franklin's here. He, he let us know that the health care facility is kind of moving along. I don't know where he went. He was back here a minute ago, but uh, at, at the university. So that that's moving. Then I maybe heard another report that maybe it's, it's stalling for a little bit. Uh, um, grants, I'd like to, if I could, uh, I'll pass these across to the, um, I asked them to put these on, but uh, just to let you know that the responsibility, responsibilities of a town have changed a lot where he had a plan or maybe he did plans, comp plan, did this, and, and he get a permit here, but uh, he and our town clerk, uh, we've expanded their responsibilities and it's uh, Emmitsburg uh, 3.0. Uh, there, we've, uh, to date, we've gotten 368, almost 369 thousand dollars worth of grants for this year, and by the uh, end of this year, we should be at 980 thousand dollars worth of grants that that the town and it's just uh, Kathy and uh, Zach and you know, everybody on our staff and uh, Maddie, uh, they've done terrific work. So the whole thing has changed the uh, paradigm on what uh, what people do when they work for a town government. Uh, I think that uh, we, we are looking for more people to volunteer. If you're out here talk about brown water, please come on to one of our committees. And, and we like, we've got all kinds of things. Please check with us. Uh, uh, and uh, we, we need more volunteers. We have uh, meetings that meet during the day, for, and we have some that meet in the evening that might accommodate everything there. Um, grants, health care, I think that's it. Thank you, sir. Appreciate it. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Any questions before we move on to public comment? All righty. Can you open a window? Yes. Yeah, <laughs> I'll open another one. It is very warm in here. If anyone wants a window open back there, please feel free. Yeah. All righty. We're going to um, do public comment. First one on the agenda will be James Dotson. Brownwater. Please give your name and your Enjoy. address. Uh, my name is James Dotson. I live over on uh, Ramblewood Drive. Uh, I'm going to read, my read from my phone because I wrote all my notes down, and if I don't, I'm going to get all jumbled up and excited, and it's going to turn into a mess. So thank you to the commissioners for coming together and supplying water bottles to the residents at an impromptu gathering to gather information from the residents and to let us know you hear us and you share our concerns. Why was the brown water, why was the brown water not on the agenda today to be spoke about? You guys know it's an issue. It should have been on the agenda to talk about. It shouldn't just be left up for public comment. I also noticed that none of you have a glass of water or even a re reusable bottle of water in front of you. You were all drinking out of a purchased bottle of water and I don't blame you at all. I wouldn't drink the water from the town either. <clears throat> I do appreciate the compensation on the water bill. My water portion for the bill was about $45 and I was only compensated $3 for the 200 gallons of water that I used over my 10,000 gallons that um, said I was used. Thank you, but this is a slap in my face. I understand the concept of being compensated for overuse, but how about compensating more for the aggravation and the clothes being ruined and having to spend money on, at laundromats and water filters, etc. Also, we stopped using the water for the most part because of the brown water. So how did I even use 10,200 gallons in the quarter? Uh, that's on me, though. I'm going to have to keep better track of that and take pictures of my meter and actually uh, record it. The excuse for the brown water, the excuse for the brown water is because a hydrant was used with the provincial house, etc. It's absolutely absurd. Yes, I agree that that causes the water to be stirred up, but that's not the cause of the brown water. You need to find the cause and then come up with a solution to fix it. In closing, the compensation of $3 for the use is ridiculous, and no one should have to pay for the brown water the town is supplying to its residents. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> Allison Callahan, is that what it is? Calhoun? Calhoun? Um, hi, my name is Allison Calhoun. Um, I live on 1330 Wheatley Drive in Brookfield, so similar water issue. Um, our family's been impacted with discolored water since moving in about 10 years ago. 
Um, every time the town flushes the hydrants, it stirs up things. And um, usually it clears up and goes away like after a week or so. But this time it hasn't. Um, it started on October 15th. We waited two weeks and I emailed the town and notified them on October 27th. Since then, it's been ongoing and has never cleared. This has significantly impacted us in many ways. We've purchased over 100 gallons of water from clean water from Jubilee to drink and give our dogs. Um, we've adjusted work schedules to meet with town staff. We've, um, it's impacted the holidays and guests we've been able to invite over, um, not to mention all the hours devoted to research, meeting with town, trying to, to determine what we can do to protect our family. Along with the added expense, we have had multiple doctor's appointments for medical concerns that has happened during this water issues. Um, until our water comes back clear and um, clean to our eyes, um, I can't be convinced that it is not related. We have contacted two independent companies who have done water testing in and around both instances have high levels of iron and manganese. When we fill our tub, you can see discolored water. So our water started out brown, but now it's remained green. It's been green ever since. There are black specks that attach to the walls of the tub and the bottom. And when you smear them, they smear, smear like tar. This is the very water that is throughout the school system and coming out our children's water fountains. Our kids are being told this water is safe to drink. When presented to town staff, no one would even consider drinking it. To date, the town has done nothing, has done the following. A uh, copper test from our house, they've ran our hose down the street for over three hours, told us to run our water continuously overnight. Um, they've told us that it's the lighting in my bathroom and that they were gonna fill our tub with distilled water from Jubilee um, to prove that's true. Um, so I told them then that just leaves me to Google it on my own. So what I found out to be health effects from iron and manganese are kidney stones, eczema, acne, neurological effects, and also staining and ruining your clothes. After three months, me and my husband needed to find a solution on our own. So we contacted a water filtration company and we'll be purchasing a filter that costs $3,000. So I know that my children have clean water, which is essential to life. Not sure what will come, but thank you for hearing our concerns. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Thank thank you. you. I have a question. <laughs> is it possible that we can get a copy of your water testing? I can give you what they well, that, That'd be great. If you get that to stay off sometime, that'd be great. Thank you. Yeah. Yes. Mr. Burns. Did you notice, because um, you live directly across where that demo home just went in, correct? From and the, what? the demo home that they just built, mm -hmm. was there an increase or anything uh, in, did you notice anything after that home was built or the new home that was built across the street? A change. A change in anything? Um, no, because that home's been there for a long time. Like, it's been, you know, the model home. The model home, like two years? occupied, so. Right, it's just, just, okay. It's just started every time they flush the hydrants, so they say they're going to flush the hydrants more to clear the sediment, but to me that's actually worse okay. because every time they do that is when we get bad water. Okay. So I don't, I'm not sure the solution, but no, not with the home. Okay, right, thank you. Yeah. Any other questions? No, sir. All right, thank you. Um, Charles Fluke. Good evening. My name is Charles Luke. With uh, I live in Stonehurst uh, here in Emmitsburg. Uh, thank you, Mayor, Commissioners, for allowing me this opportunity to speak to you all tonight. A uh, few comments I'd like to make is: Is there anybody from Public Works here tonight representing? Not tonight. No. no. Okay. Uh, again, <coughs> some of the questions I may ask are more technical, and you may not be able to address them. Um, the interest came from, as you had mentioned, uh, Mr. Burns, the leaks that you discovered or proposed leaks. Uh, mainly up on 140 and uh, North Seton. Uh, has the town conducted any hydrostatic testing of the piping to isolate any uh, other leaks or proposed uh, cause of the sediment entering the system? Well, the sediment from 
the research we've done and the discussions we have, the sediment's naturally occurring. doesn't matter where you are in the state. Um, I know through talking to county commissioners elsewhere and state delegates that you can go to Rockville, <laughs> Potomac, and all those different areas uh, that feed off of the Potomac River and different situations like that, and they have the same situations that occur. Uh, and the sediment is the same uh, throughout uh, all those areas. So as, as it leaves our water treatment facility, is it, are you still seeing the sediment, the rusty brown water, no. any sediment at that no. time? So it's being picked up elsewhere beyond after the water treatment facility, then, correct? correct? Okay. It's just, it's the sediment that naturally occurs in the water, yes. Okay. But that's being removed by the water treatment system as well. It's I'm actually the sediment that. is actually from the pipes. It's okay. not from the water itself. It's from the pipes. We'll go with the rusty brown water then, straight with the rusty brown water, correct? It, the, the brown water is rust. Okay. Yes. Um, and and it, your question about the Waynesboro Pike, we did have a leak detection specialist come in and pinpoint um, what we believe is the location of where the leak actually is. And our flow into Pembroke and Brookfield, does that come from that piping system or is that after it enters our development and then it continues on up 140 do you know is the direction of flow it, after us can't remember. it does it does yeah. yes it, it goes it across track road and comes in yeah so it does come off track road so it comes down one 140 to us from that okay very good it moves downhill is that correct yep. you're actually being fed but two both ways it should both be connected should be so by brookfield and Pem okay. it should be coming in both directions pembroke woods is coming from the tracked road area correct? correct and brookfield is being fed from a separate line that's coming correct. up from Yes. 140 not Irish Town Road, correct? Correct. 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 And then it circles okay. through the top uh, where the Calhouns are and then comes back down through uh, Pembroke Road or Brookfield Road, the empty road there. Okay. Very good. And have your test, have you done any additional testing beyond what the EPA requires, the, the six required EPA test? Have you done anything for, for the iron at any residents or have you only relied on the testing at the, again, do you do the testing at the hydrant only at the plant? No, we've actually taken samples from um, certain residents um, and sent those for, we either did, we do with chlorine, turbidity, and pH in-house. The rest has to be sent out. Okay. What you have to do is you have to specifically ask for what's tested. Um, they don't do what everybody's been calling for, a blanket test. Mm -hmm. we, I, I take that back. They can do a blanket test on one sample. Um, that's about $25,000, according to the lab. So you have to be specific what you ask for. So what we've sent out to have tested would be lead, copper, um, bacteria. There was one other. I can't recall off the top of my head what the other one was. Is that specific to the iron bacteria that could be caused through the iron sediment? That, yes. At, at, okay. Very good. All right. And our annual drinking water quality uh, report, has that been made available? from this year or last year? It gets posted um, in June. Okay. June. June? Yes. Okay. And that's online, correct? The, the last year's is online. Sorry, this is really bad. So it gets e it gets mailed out with your quarterly water bill in June, and it is also posted on um, MDE's website as well as our website. Okay. Thank you. Thank you for coming. All right. What's going on? And I noticed that you also had an RFP out for a uh, clarifier. Is that to be installed? This is terrible. Yeah. Is that to be installed to correct issues that we have now, or is that a separate so concern? That's to be in, that's installed to help correct the issues that are happening now. So it's going to be installed up on the mountain so that the water that is being drawn from the lake will be clarified before it gets the wastewater treatment plant and then clarified again. Okay. It okay. actually, what it's going to do is provide capacity to our storage tank. Um, we're through the um, process we're determining the exact location if it's going to go through the lake only or if it's going to go lake and well but what it, the main con the main purpose of that is so that we can maintain our storage levels because in drought conditions and summer conditions you can't always get enough mo uh, money enough water in the lake and so then our storage tank drops and we have you know difficulties um, being able to um, flush adequately so this will help keep our capacity higher again thank you for all for is it too loud i think they're all they're all too loud at least turn down let's up. take like a five minute break and let's uh reset the mics yeah five minute recess go ahead sure go ahead five minute we'll take a five minute recess do we need a motion for that mr sweeney uh go ahead give okay. me a motion. i'll make a motion for a microphone servicing five minute recess is there a second? Second. 
Motion has been made by Commissioner Donald. Second by Commissioner Burns. All in favor, please say aye. 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 A